Good evening, I'm Karolina Pajanczkowska and this is Flash News, the show where we show a lot of information about Poland region and worldwide. And we start with amazing news because this is what's one of the best days for Poland at the Olympics in Tokyo. Our representatives won four consecutive medal gold was won by hammer thrower Wojciech Nowicki, silver by sailors Agnieszka Skrzypulec and Jolanta Ogar, and bronze by hammer thrower Paweł Fajdek and runner Patrick Dobek. Congratulations, thank you all, we are so proud. <laughs> I have been dreaming about it for five years to come out so well at such an important event. For me this bronze is like gold or even platinum. It's a very big achievement, it's hard for me to say. Everything went well. We knew we had good speed that we would be able to fight with others. It is a dream of every athlete to lift such a medal. Ten medals in total and counting. But sometimes the sport mixed with politics. And so Belarusian athlete Kristina Tisimanskaya had to fled from Lukashenko's regime. And now she landed in Warsaw, Poland. The athlete remains under the protection of Polish diplomatic services. Her husband, who escaped from Belarus via Ukraine too, also has received a Polish humanitarian visa. And why? There's more. Kristina Cimanuskaya left Tokyo. For security reasons, she flew to Vienna and then arrived in Warsaw. Ms. Cimanuskaya is taken care of by Polish diplomatic authorities. At the same time, her husband received a humanitarian visa, a Polish humanitarian visa. Belarusian activists withdrew Cimanuskaya from the Olympics and forcibly tried to send her back to Belarus after she criticized the authorities of the sports association. She could even have faced arrest because she dared to voice her displeasure and that's enough. We're keeping you all under the boot. That's the motto of the Lukashenko regime. The athlete found shelter in the Polish embassy in Tokyo, where she received a humanitarian visa. 400 Belarusian citizens have received international protection in Poland. The fact that Poland has introduced a humanitarian visa that the program Solidarity with Belarus is working, all these actions of the Polish government are very helpful for Belarusians. Instant help from Polish diplomacy was echoed in the world media and among American congressmen. I appreciate that Poland is granting asylum to Belarusian Olympic sprinter Kristina Cimanuskaya, who bravely escaped abuse by the Lukashenko regime. Yesterday in Kiev, hundreds of people protested in front of the Belarusian embassy after the body of the hanged leader of the Belarusian house Vitaly Shishu, who helped Belarusians forced to flee the country, was found in one of the parks. Lukashenko's actions were limited to the territory of Belarus and to intimidate the opposition. And now, after the murder of the Belarusian activist in Kiev, we have such a signal that these actions of these KGB services can also reach other countries. Today, the president of Ukraine ordered the services to increase the protection of Belarusians who took refuge in Ukraine from persecution by the Lukashenko regime. Kristina Cimanuskaya's husband and son are currently in Ukraine. In Flash News, we look local, we look global, we move overseas. Because a historic moment in Far Knox military base came to reality. Polish General Mayor General Adam Jokes assumed his duties as the deputy commander of the U.S. Army 5th Corps. There is not the slightest doubt that this is a historic moment. After all, General Adam Yox as a Pole took the highest position in the history of the American Army after Kazimir Pulaski and Tadeusz Kosciuszko. We asked General Yox how he feels about making U.S. Army history with the white and red flag on his shoulder. I'm very proud, I'm honored to be making Fifth Corps history, but of course I also feel the obligation and responsibility that I have as a Polish general in American military structure. This is also very important for the Polish-American alliance. It shows that Americans trust Polish commanders, they trust the Polish army. And also how important the eastern flank of NATO is for them. It's a recognition of the, of the close partnership, the relationship that we have uh, with Poland. Uh, as I described in my remarks, uh, we will be uh, responsible for a great deal of uh, operations and activities in U.S. Uh, army Europe's uh, area of responsibility. And we will do that from here at Fort Knox as well as uh, in Poznan, Poland.
to jest zaufanie, jakim Amerykanie... This is the trust that Americans have in Polish officers, especially General Ojox, but this is of great importance for building relations for the future. The place of the ceremony is, of course, not accidental. It is here at Kentucky State that General Adam Ojox will perform his duties as Deputy Commander of the U.S. Army 5th Corps. Middle East. Exactly a year ago, the capital of Lebanon, Beirut, was shaken by a powerful explosion in the port caused due to negligence of local authorities. The city is still unable to forget this tragedy in which over 200 people lost their lives. Polish humanitarian organizations constantly reach out to help the victims. It was one of the biggest disasters in Lebanese history. A year ago, a giant explosion of unprotected chemicals in the port of Beirut killed more than 200 people. Tens of thousands injured, a tragedy for hundreds of thousands of people. Homes were destroyed, jobs and all this in the center of Beirut, so the city has been stabbed in the heart. Today, at the hour of the explosion, a mass was celebrated for the victims. Unfortunately, today the situation in Lebanon is still very difficult. In addition to the need to rebuild what was destroyed in the country, there is a shortage of medicine, there is no electricity, fuel is being given away, and the Lebanese currency has lost 90% of its value. Many people are starving. The people affected by the explosion and economic crisis are being helped, among others, by Polish humanitarian organizations, including Caritas Poland. We have raised a very large sum of money, over 10 million Polish lotus, which enabled us to include many Lebanese families in our family-to-family -family program. Because literally everything Everything is still needed in Beirut. The destruction has been estimated at several billion dollars. And we are back to U.S. After the shooting outside Pentagon, the FBI is conducting an investigation. The attacker opened fire, wounding several people, and shot police officer to death. Up to a dozen shots could be heard at the scene, U.S. media reports. A Pentagon police officer was attacked on the Metro bus platform. Gunfire was exchanged and there were, uh, there were several casualties. The FBI is on scene, leading the investigation. The police officer died as a result of his wounds. The condition of the injured is not known. The shooting occurred in front of the Pentagon building. Thousands of employees of the U.S. Department of Defense passed there every day, as well as Americans using the subway. The station was bypassed by trains. The Pentagon was closed for several hours. The secretary is uh, here at the building now. He was out of the building at the time of the incident, attending a normally weekly scheduled uh, meeting with the president. He did have a chance to visit the, the Pentagon Police Operations Center when he returned uh, to check in with them um, and to express his gratitude for everything they're doing uh, on, on, this, uh, on this day with this particular uh, incident. Before the entrance to the Pentagon, flags were lowered to half mast to honor the killed police officer. Three people died in a train crash in Western Czech Republic. A head-on collision, including fast train from Munich and a local broad train, brought almost 50 injured, some in a serious condition. The accident happened near Milavce. An express train from Munich to Prague, known as the Western Express and original passenger train, collided head-on. The accident occurred on a single-track section of the route before which the trains should have passed each other. One of the trains ran onto the track without responding to the warning signal, but it is not yet known whether this was the driver's fault or due to an accident. The European Union is sending aid to Turkey, which for a week has been fighting catastrophic fires in the south of the country. Planes from Spain and Croatia have already joined the firefight. So far, in almost 120 fires, 80 people have died, hundreds have been injured and many tourists have been evacuated. Greece, Albania and Croatia are also struggling with the fire. Authorities in Tokyo have reported 4,166 new coronavirus infections. That's the most since the start of the pandemic. Japan is struggling with the rise in infections of the dangerous Delta strain, which has not been contained by an extended and expanded state of emergency. In Tokyo, where the Olympic Games are underway, the seven-day average of infections detected each day is up by 78 percent from last week. A record of 29 new infections among people associated with the Games were also reported today, according to a local portal. The total number of such cases has risen to 322. The virus is also spreading on an increasing scale outside of the capital and the head of the government's advisory panel on COVID-19 has urged authorities to consider imposing a nationwide state of emergency. A state of emergency is currently in place in Tokyo and three neighboring prefectures as well as Osaka and Okinawa. And our situation worldwide is getting serious now. We start our coronavirus report. The Delta strain is now responsible for over 80 percent of coronavirus cases in Poland. As uh, this mutation is more contagious, the Ministry of Health reminds people of the importance of vaccination as they are most effective way of fighting the pandemic so far. 
The number of new coronavirus infections is increasing, the health ministry points out. Today it is 164 cases. In the following weeks, the increase in infections is expected to accelerate, for which the Delta variant will be responsible. Vaccinations can protect us from the drama of the fourth wave. Therefore, the Ministry of Health announces further persuasion of the unvaccinated and a decisive fight against those who attack vaccination centers and medics, all because of acts of vandalism and aggression. Two days ago in Zamość, a man set fire to a mobile vaccination center and the sanitary building. This is a phenomenon that cannot be called anything other than anti-vaccine terror. Vaccine opponents are also reaching for fake news. This video was supposed to be proof of the alleged harm of vaccinations. In reality, a person who had been bitten by an insect was being helped while waiting for an ambulance at a vaccination center. The Minister of Health announced that in areas with low vaccination rates, any sanitary restrictions in case of an increase in the number of infections will be introduced as soon as possible. Now we change the subject. They produce honey on a daily basis, but now the bees that we are talking about can help to colonize Mars. I know this sounds like hoax, but it's not. Scientists from Krakow are introducing research on the possibility of their trip to the red planet and the effects of overloads during their rocket flight. The exploration of the Red Planet continues. Hence, four bee queens and a small entourage have become unusual passengers in a training simulator for astronauts and military pilots. First effects are that the queens survived this pain. It was the most sensitive moment, but now I'm collecting data on how many eggs they lay. Scientists from Krakow are trying to determine what effect the flight into space could have on the reproduction of bees. No one in the world has ever done such research. Bees are a very important part of the ecosystem here on Earth, and in the perspective moving to Mars, settling down, it is also extremely important to think about a place to provide future settlers with some source of food which will not depend on us here on Earth, most likely it will be glass houses. Scientists are also trying to answer the question of whether it is possible to transport these hard-working insects in space and how it will look like their pollination of plants in space. If the research is successful, it will be the longest journey in the history of their existence because bees on their way to the Red Planet will cover hundreds of millions of kilometers. If we take these bees to Mars, we will take care of them, look after them to control the functioning of that family. That's what comes from this tradition of beekeeping. For now, a computer model of space bees is being created from the data collected so that eventually it will be possible to design a device to protect them from overloads during their rocket flight. We have a precise plan of what and how to do with these bees and we have a tool in the form of a cybernetic model of a bee colony on which we are able to check what effects such a space adventure will have on development later. The final results of the study will be known at the end of the year. And if it doesn't work, there always can be plan B. After almost 20 years, priceless ancient artifacts are back to Iraq. Many of them dating back 4,000 years were exported to the United States after the American invasion in 2000. Three, the Iraqi government said now it planned to put the most significant relics on display in the country's National Museum. The process of returning works confiscated by American authorities to dealers and museums has just begun. In total, Iraq is expected to recover over 17,000 ancient artifacts. This is only part of the lost heritage. Even more treasures were exported or barbarically destroyed by the self-proclaimed Islamic State, which captured much of Iraq for three years in 2014. The volcano on the Reykjans Peninsula, which awoke in March after eight centuries, does not intend to rest. Its activity constantly arouses interest. Some tourists chose hiking, others admire the lava from a helicopter. More trails are being built in the area because everything indicates that the volcano still has a lot of power and the eruption may not end soon. From an actress to a black sheep of the British royal family, Meghan Markle, wife of Prince Harry, turns 40. The American's life changed dramatically five years ago during her first date with Queen Elizabeth's grandson. Since then, Meghan has managed to give birth to two children, confront her husband with the family and move to him overseas. Among their duties is monitoring the state and changes in the oceans. Specialists from the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration also have free moments during which, for example, they watch dolphins. Such a view was captured by an underwater camera near Florida. The dolphins were diving around the ship unaware that they were providing an unusual spectacle for viewers. That's a wrap. Thank you very much for joining us on Flash News. We are back tomorrow, same time. Goodbye.